welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Thursday, December 20th. An in-depth expose on Wang Li Jun pulled off shelves. Abducted in China, this Taiwanese man testifies on the persecution of Falun Gong. And what does this sign say that sparked outrage online? Chongqing's former police chief Wang Li Jun is currently in jail for helping to cover up a murder of a British businessman. This week, a 40-page expose of Wang in a magazine proved to be hugely popular, so much so that it's apparently being recalled. An expose on Chongqing's former police chief Wang Li Jun has reportedly been pulled off the shelves. Observers say it's another sign that Chinese leaders are still far from ready for scrutiny. This latest edition of the Southern Weekly features the man now behind bars. The Guangdong-based media conglomerate is known for its bold reporting that sometimes crosses China's murky censorship lines. The edition came out on Monday and was reportedly snatched up within hours. By that evening, booksellers said no more were available and the edition has been recalled. The public hoped this expose could be used to reflect on the country as a whole. But this is obviously what the regime wants, so it has to stop the story. This shows that even though some people are happy, this might be another wave of reform. It's probably just wishful thinking. In February, Wang Lijun inadvertently exposed one of the biggest political scandals for the Chinese regime after he fled to a U.S. consulate. The Southern Weekly focused on Wang's complex relationship with ousted party secretary of Chongqing, Bo Xilai. It also revealed how their infamous crime-fighting campaign frequently relied on brutal torture. The eight-article collection alleged Bo had ordered Wang to set up a massive surveillance and intelligence network in Chongqing, including using GPS technology to track individuals. It also said Wang was obsessed with his public image. Chongqing was actually a microcosm of China. The whole country is like this, corrupt. So the report had a sore point, and they had to hide it. Southern Weekly reported that Wang had a close relationship with Bo's wife, Gu Kai Lai. She is now serving a suspended life sentence for murdering British businessman Neil Haywood. Wang himself was sentenced shortly after Gu's trial. He is serving a 15-year sentence for covering up that murder, amongst other crimes. Taiwanese Falun Gong practitioner Zhong Dingbang was abducted earlier this year in mainland China by local security officials. This week, he's in the United States. He testified before a congressional hearing on the Chinese regime's persecution of the spiritual practice. The U.S. Congress and Congressional Executive Commission on China held a hearing on December 18th on the persecution of Falun Gong, a meditation practice in China. Present at the hearing was Zhang Dingbang, a Taiwanese citizen who was illegally arrested and detained by Chinese authorities in June when he visited relatives in the mainland. Authorities claim he threatened national security by trying to broadcast Falun Gong materials in China, but his real crime was trying to overcome China's censorship and exercise his right, a human right, right to free expression. Zhang Dingbang was eventually freed with the efforts of his family, the Taiwanese people and the international community. In his testimony, Zhang detailed the torture he was subject to while under a 24-hour surveillance and interrogation. The Chinese Communist authorities forced Zhang to admit made-up charges. I was forced to write and rewrite many times the statement, and I was videotaped again and again. Zhang was grateful for the rescue efforts by the U.S. Congress members and stressed that the Chinese Communist Party has extended the persecution outside of China. Taking his case as an example, Zhang believes that it's important to let the world know of the crimes the regime has committed. The most important thing is to, to let everybody know what they have done. They hide everything. They control the media. They control their internet, internet accessing. Zhang Dingbang hopes that the U.S. Congress and President Barack Obama will publicly ask the Chinese regime to stop the persecution of Falun Gong. 26 people have been charged in New York for helping to make false asylum applications of Chinese immigrants. Next, find out what tactics they used and who the immigrants pretended to be. 
On Tuesday, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York indicted 26 people, including six lawyers, for their involvement in hundreds of fraudulent Chinese asylum cases. According to the allegations, at least 10 law firms based in Manhattan's Chinatown and Flushing, Queens, submitted applications containing false stories of persecution suffered by Chinese applicants. The law firms also trained their clients to lie based on false persecution stories in the interviews with immigration officers. In order to get asylum, applicants need to show that they suffered persecution in their country of origin on account of race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group, or that they will face persecution if they return home. Usually employees at law firms prepared the applications with the fabricated story and trained clients on how to lie in their asylum interviews. A translator would translate for the client at the interview, and if the client's response did not match the fabricated story, the translator would falsely translate the answers. In cases where the client was claiming asylum on the basis of religious persecution, but was not a Christian, he would be referred to a church for training in the basics of Christianity. Investigators say most of the fabricated cases are those pertaining the persecution of Christians, forced abortions, or those persecuted for their belief in the Falun Gong spiritual practice. When five young boys died in a dumpster in Guizhou province in November, outrage and sadness swept across China's internet. Now, more than one month later, what has local authorities done that sparked even more anger? Humans and animals prohibited from entering, violate at own risk. This appears to be fair warning for these dumpsters along the streets of Bijie City in Guizhou province. But the signage has created uproar on China's internet. That's because in November, five young boys died inside one of these dumpsters. They had crawled in one night, lit a charcoal lantern to keep warm, and were found dead the next morning. They died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Authorities did this to show people that they have given you fair warning, and if you still go in, then it's your own fault, not the government's. It's actually a very irresponsible attitude. The victims aged 9 to 13 years old were all cousins. They were part of China's left-behind children, rural kids whose parents have left to find work elsewhere. In this case, the boys were left with their grandma, and there were no one to wander around the streets of Bijie. But locals say the new signage is hardly a solution for kids like them. The authorities should solve the problem of children who are left at home are homeless. Then there won't be homeless kids and they won't get into dumpsters anymore. One netizen had a suggestion for what BZ authorities should do instead. He wrote in his Weibo account, quote, Children can't read, animals can't read, only the government knows how to read. So please get into the dumpster yourself, quote. This isn't the first time that BZ officials have been criticized after the boy's death. Authorities temporarily detained a former reporter who first exposed the story online, sparking an outcry. Following the latest debacle, the deputy head of the city's propaganda department said on Wednesday that not all the city's dumpsters have been marked with the sign, and authorities will take netizens' response into consideration. And coming up after the break, China pledges to curb software piracy in state-owned companies. More Chinese netizens turn to Weibo than CCTV for news. And netizens say all is well on this last day of the Mayan calendar. And welcome back. China's Vice Premier Wang Qishan led a delegation to the U.S. this week, attending a two-day trade forum with U.S. officials. The talks, officially called the U.S.-China Joint Commission on Commerce and Trade, finished on Wednesday. The meeting followed a year of bumpy relations between the world's two largest economies. Trade disputes over tariffs, currency and intellectual property have become large issues of contention. 
Following the talks, the Chinese delegation pledged to address piracy and counterfeit issues. It said it would start by getting state-owned companies to use legal software. In return, China wants the U.S. to ease export restrictions on its high-technology goods. It also asked the U.S. to be more open to Chinese investments. The leadership change in the Chinese Communist Party has been followed by signs of reform and anti-corruption efforts. Yet censorship and surveillance remain widespread. Currently, Chinese security forces appear to have stepped up their crackdown on the VPN services that allow freer internet use. China's internet surveillance means everyone in cyberspace is subject to monitoring, and what they can access online is heavily filtered. Virtual private networks, or VPNs, have long been one of the few ways available to get around such controls. They allow web users to access sites banned in China, like Facebook and Twitter. Now those services are being squeezed out. Foreign VPN providers like Astral, Whitopia and StrongVPN have recently announced that their servers are being blocked in China, apparently because of increased censorship measures. In response to the reports, state-run Global Times says the country's Great Firewall system has not become stricter. Instead, it claims these foreign VPN providers are illegal to operate in China to begin with because they have not registered there. According to Chinese law, only local companies and foreign ones in joint ventures with Chinese companies are allowed to register. VPN disruptions not only inconvenience web users, they also affect business operations. It's common for multinational companies in China to use VPNs for cross-border online communications. And perhaps it's because of that tight control of information that Chinese netizens are shying away from official sources for news. A new survey was published this week showing Weibo users trust the Chinese version of Twitter more than state-run news. More of China's citizens say they trust information from online social media than they do state-run media. This information came during the release of the 2013 Blue Book of China's Society in Beijing this Tuesday. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences prepared the survey. The annual Society Blue Book gives analysis and forecasts on Chinese society. In a survey of urban residents, 44 percent of those with an account on Weibo, China's version of Twitter, would turn to Weibo after an event or incident. That's compared to the 38 percent who said they would learn about the event from the state-run nightly news. For those aged 30 years or younger, online information is their most trusted source, with newspapers coming in second. Weibo is a relatively open platform. Though its information may not always be true, people are able to express themselves there. But information on TV is only one directional. Weibo is two ways, and the discussion happens under the eyes of the whole society, so we have more trust in its accuracy. Chinese authorities strictly regulate the information that is spread through social media. But even with a strict censorship system, online information does get past Internet police. That's particularly true after protests and riots. Unofficial photos and videos are quickly circulated online before an official report is released. Other survey results published by the Blue Book show that the urban population was most worried about food safety in 2012. The next concern was public safety, followed by counterfeit products. It's still Thursday here in the U.S., but for residents in China, it's Friday, December 21st, the last recorded day on the Mayan calendar. In the lead-up to this day, rumors including three straight days of darkness sparked a candle shopping spree. Others built shelters they hoped to get them through the end of days. The Chinese police also began rounding up individuals they say were spreading doomsday rumors. But according to Weibo users, December 21st appears to be like any other day. The only thing that caused some alarm was the weather forecast. Temperatures in the capital Beijing plummeted suddenly on Thursday. Over the weekend, residents there can expect the coldest December nights in 10 years. Saturday's low is expected to be a chilly 5 degree Fahrenheit. Beijing's rumor-fearing authorities have already told residents not to link the freeze to any talk of the end of the world. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our new YouTube channel, NTD on China, where you'll find all of NTD's China content. Coming up next is Shelley Zhang for China Focus. Stay tuned.